So from fluid analysis, let's look at manufacturing analysis. And this is where we start looking at, can these plastic components be uh, created? Now I'm using Plastic Injection Engineer to kind of look at a simple fill analysis on that bottom bearing housing for the uh, motor mount. Um, this really just holds the shaft in place. So it isn't structurally uh, too important, but it is important to make sure that that hole not only fits the bearing, right? The lip fits the bearing, but also holds the shaft uh, perfectly centered. So here I'm adding two injection locations, one on either side of the model. Uh, and we're injecting this with a certain amount of fill to see, is this going to work? Now we can see uh, the mesh generates pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results. Now with the two gate fill up, fill, <clears throat> excuse me, it isn't as good of a result as I expected. We're actually seeing that it is an uneven fill. Uh, all the corners are not filling exactly the same. You can see that through the fill plot. We're also seeing a good amount of shear uh, in the model here as well. So if I look at the pressure at end of fill, we have a higher pressure on two ends versus the other. We also see the flow front central temperature. We can see the velocity vectors at the end of fill and we can see the shear stress. And we've got a little bit too much shear stress in this model for comfort. Um, it's, it's not quite a good design. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch. I actually talked to our injection molding engineer, Bill, and he said, you know what, switch to four gates. That's what I would recommend in this analysis. So that's what we did. Uh, so he actually uh, guided me through this and we switched to a four gate system with a sprue and uh, four gates coming directly off of that sprue. Now, the nice part about this is through Bill's advisement, this actually had a lot better uh, benefit. Setup was uh, pretty much the exact same. We have a series of vents. Uh, so we did a venting analysis on this as well to kind of make sure that the pressure in the fill was good. We didn't have any dieseling areas. But what we were able to see here is from the fill, we were able to fill very evenly. So all corners filled almost at the exact same time by switching to a four vent uh, or sorry, a four gate analysis. We can also see that the uh, pressure at end of fill is very even. The flow front central temperature was pretty even. The ease of fill was very good. And we can also look at the shear and the shear is pretty much non-existent in this model. It's very even. That gives us a good feel that this part is not going to warp um, off of its central axis. So we feel pretty good about that. We also ran a pack analysis. So we held pressure on this to kind of keep the molten uh, material in. And what we can see here is that the residual stress on this looks pretty good as well. Now, I took that one step further and in SolidWorks Plastics, we certainly could do this in, in, in Injection Mold Engineer, but in SolidWorks Plastics, I wanted to show you that we can do a cool and warp analysis here as well. So if I pull up SolidWorks Plastics, we can see that we have a little bit more to this analysis. So it's a fill, pack, cool, and warp. <clears throat> And with this, we have certain settings for the uh, material. So we applied the polymer, so we can pick that out of the database. Same thing as what we did inside of Injection Mold Engineer. These are pretty much the exact same uh, software. Just one runs on the platform, one runs right inside of SolidWorks. So we can see the cooling channels were defined in the model. We actually even have a baffle uh, through the center to kind of cool that that internal bearing area that typically would be kind of hard to cool otherwise without a baffle. We have the cavity specified, and then we also have a virtual mold to take away heat as well in and around uh, the body. So we can specify that here as well. We're using a sprue with a four gate location. So our injection location is at the top of that sprue. We also defined a clamp force in the model in a clamp force direction. And then we have our air vents specified as well. So again, the same venting locations as we used in Plastic Injection Engineer. 
From there, I have my cooling channels, and these are defined um, with a specific flow rate and fluid for those and a given temperature. So that's specified for all five of those cooling channels, including the one with the baffle. I also ran this uh, using a solid mesh. Now, the solid mesh is going to give us a better parameter with respect to uh, the warp analysis. So I can show the solid mesh on the part. We can also see the runner. We can see the cooling channels that are meshed and the mold itself. So all of those aspects are meshed using a solid. Now, from there, let's go ahead and take a look at our results. So if we look at the fill analysis, it's going to look very similar to what we had in induction or in injection uh, mold engineer. And we can see here, if I animate this, that fill kind of coming down, we can see through the cross section because we did a solid mesh with this one, also available in plastic injection engineer. And what we see is how those two flow fronts, those flow fronts come together, kind of going down those ribbed sections of the vent and finally fill out uh, those corners. We can stop that animation. We can take a look at the weld lines. Again, that same weld line prediction is what Injection Engineer gave us. We can look at the velocity vectors at end of fill as well. We can look at the pressure at end of fill, pressure at end of packing, the switch time, the shear rate at end of fill. Again, low shear rate with the four injection locations. We can also look at sink marks, so how much sink might take place in the model. We can also look at the ease of fill. Uh, so we can see that this is going to fill pretty evenly um, and easily. We can also see the gate contribution. So this fills pretty even with those four quadrants. Let's go ahead and look at the pack, um, the pack results. So we can see the pressure at end of fill. We can see the temperature at end of pack. Uh, we can see the volumetric shrinkage at end of pack. We can also see the frozen areas at end of pack. So it's looking pretty good that this part can be ejected. We can look at the cooling results, to understand the temperature in the model. So what temperature uh, are we seeing with the cooling channels? What temperature are we seeing on the parts? So this is actually part cooling time. We can measure different areas on the model, kind of understanding the difference between those area, uh, the uh, point locations that we're picking as well. So we'll turn the measure tool off. We look at the cooling temperature, the temperature at end of cool, the mold temperature at end of cooling. We can also take a look at the mold visibility, see what temperature that has. We can also do a section view of a mold to kind of understand the temperature in and around the cavity or the part itself and the cooling channels, which is actually pretty, pretty uh, interesting. We can also then look at the cooling channel uh, temperature here as well. So let's go ahead and switch to the pressure of the cooling. And we can see the pressure uh, within those cooling channels through that cross section as well. And then lastly, let's take a look at the warp result. So in here, we can switch and take a look at the deformation uh, scale. So we'll make this 10 times. So uh, increase that to kind of see how is it moving so we can kind of see it shrinking towards the center the good news about that is it is kind of keeping the center centered right so we would expect that hole at the center of this part to be to be pretty much concentric with where it should be uh, again this is exaggerated 10 times and we can see the animation of that kind of uh in shrinking down towards the center and kind of puckering up towards the top So some of the other things that we can do here is we can see the in-molded residual stress, the quenching thermal stress on the part, the total stress displacement, the sink mark profile, and this is an accurate uh, measurable sink mark. And we can look at the in-molded residual stress and then the demolding von Mises stress as well. We can also export this out as a deformed shape which is actually pretty cool so we could put this back into the full model in its deformed uh value so we can see that here if i right click on my result on uh, my warp folder and choose create body from deformed shape 
we can actually do the actual warp or a counter deformed warp if we wanted to. We can save this out to a new part file. And what we're going to get is we're going to get that deformed shape. Now, the nice thing about this is I can put this back into the main model to understand are my holes going to align properly? Are we going to be able to, uh, is this going to fit the bearing? Is that going to keep that shaft centered? So this is the deformed body exported out of SolidWorks Plastics.